Hey, what's up Logic fans? Welcome to another video. We're going to hit section 4.7 of the text today, our seventh section on quantificational symbolization. And here we're going to pause on introducing a uh, new symbolic apparatus. We've got the quantifiers on board now, property constants and all this machinery. Uh, we're going to pause with that and we're going to look at the formal relationship between the two quantifiers the uh, universal and the existential and I think pausing to look at this is really going to help you with um, all of our future work so let's stop and take a look at it all right let's rock all right logic fans let's jump straight into it so we're going to be looking at how the universal quantifier relates to the existential quantifier and vice versa and so I've got a couple of domains here four of them um, and a property constant for being red and then I've got these different pairs of sentences here so uh you know this is a pair of sentences so here's a sentence okay and um here's another sentence and notice this one is in terms of the universal quantifier and this one is in terms of the existential quantifier and the idea is is that there's a certain relationship between this pair of sentences similarly for this pair similarly for this pair similarly for this pair okay so one's in universal one's in existential and there's a relationship between the sentences so we're going to explore what that is and then i'll present you with the formal idea so um for now what i want you to do is i want you to figure out whether this sentence is true or false on each of these domains and independently considered whether this sentence is true or false on these same domains don't worry about these next three just for this first one a and um, pause now and give that a try. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to evaluate this, but let's go through it together nice and easy. So this thing says for everything, everything is red. Anything you pick out of the D1, anything you pick out of D1's bag, whatever you pick out, it's going to satisfy this description. It's red. So uh, on examination of that particular domain that turns out to be a true um, sentence okay now what about one red ball one yellow ball and nothing else well this says everything no matter what you pick out of d2 it's going to satisfy this description and that's absolutely false right because you know is red versus you know is yellow so uh, d3 two yellow balls and nothing else definitely false there now on the empty domain this of course turns out to be true as we've discussed all right now uh what about this sentence so let's completely forget about what we did up here and fresh eyes let's look at this case all right so um one thing to do is to think about you know you could think about it this way you could think about okay suppose that leading negation wasn't there right and then i could evaluate this sentence on each of the domains and then i'm just going to do the opposite so if this were to evaluate to true i would put the putting the negation back on evaluate it to false and vice versa um, there's other techniques true but this says at least one thing is not f well at least one thing is not red right is false and so with the leading negation that sentence is going to evaluate to true so this whole sentence with the leading negation is is true okay so that's one way you can help yourself to think about these for d2 um, uh, this says nothing um, lacks f and uh, that's actually uh, going to be false there is something that lacks f um, nothing lacks um, f and it's the case that everything lacks f there so let's go ahead and take a look at this so supposing that this said at least one thing is such that it's not red that would evaluate to true on d3 but since we're evaluating the negation of that right this is going to turn out to be false so that's one way to sort of help yourself figure these out and then of course on uh, the empty domain it's not the case that something exists like this is going to be true nothing exists there so it's going to satisfy it okay now uh here's the big question that i want to show you if you look at this okay you'll notice that this sentence takes the exact same truth value as this sentence on all four of these domains and so you'll start to wonder you know is that a coincidence and the answer is no it's not a coincidence this sentence and this sentence they are logically equivalent okay and that's why you're getting this result now this does not prove that they're logically equivalent we will be able to prove logical equivalence later 
when we get to uh, chapter 6 and quantificational syntax, we will also be able to prove that a pair of sentences are not logically equivalent in chapter 5. But um, here, uh, this is strongly suggesting, let's say, you know, you've got some evidence that they are logically equivalent sentences, and indeed they are. Okay, try it for uh, these this, this pair of sentences. Same idea, evaluate on the same... Um, uh, four domains of discourse here, and let's see what we get. Pause now. Okay, this says everything is such that it's not red. No matter what you pick out of uh, D1, whatever you pick out will not be red, and that's false. Uh, everything in there is not red, that's also false. Everything in there is not red, that's true. They're all yellow. Okay, and this is going to be true because it's a universally quantified sentence on the empty domain. All right, now, um, this says uh, nothing is red, which is false here. Uh, false here, something is red there. Uh, true here and true here. Okay, so uh, once again, in this particular case, we see that the two sentences take the same truth value across these four domains, suggesting that they are logically equivalent, and in fact, they are logically equivalent, okay? All right, let's try it for uh, this pair of sentences here, uh, C. So it's going to be, go ahead and pause it and give this a shot while I get set up here. This one's like this. This one's like this. Okay, hopefully you've had a second to pause. Uh, let's let's press on. This says it's not the case that everything is red. Well, at D1, everything is red, so that sentence is false. And once again, you could think of it without the leading negation. If I take away the leading negation and I evaluate this and it says everything is red, well, that would evaluate to true on D1. But adding in the leading negation, that's going to switch it to false, okay? So uh, hopefully that little technique um, can, can help you out. Um, D2, uh, it's not the case that everything is red. That's true. One of the things is yellow. It's not the case that everything is red. That's also true. At least one thing is not red. In fact, two things are. The only two things there are not red. Um, and this is going to be false, okay? So once again, if you have trouble seeing that, let's evaluate it without the leading negation. Everything is red. Well, on the empty domain, that's true. So with the leading negation, that's going to evaluate to false, okay? All right, uh, let's go with fresh eyes and look at this independent sentence that we just pulled out of a hat at random, okay? Uh, at least one thing is not red. Well, that's false on D1. Everything there is red. At least one thing is not red on D2. That's true, the yellow one. It's also true here. There's two yellow ones. There's two things that are not red, but at least one thing is not red. And there exists something satisfying this description. Not on the empty domain. There doesn't. Nothing exists there, right? And so once again, we get the suggestion that the sentences in question are are logically equivalent, and in fact they are, though we will not be able to prove that until later, but this suggests it to us, okay? So we're suggesting a formal relationship between the quantifiers, which I will um, uh, make explicit after this exercise. So uh, go ahead and try this last one. So it looks like this, and yeah, like this. Pause now. And okay, if you feel like uh, you need it, you might want to take this guy off. It says everything, no matter what you pick out of D1, it's going to be not red. It's going to satisfy this description. It's not red. Well, that's just false, right? And so if we add the leading negation back in, that's going to turn out to be true, right? Uh, this uh, D2, uh, you know, once again, pick anything you like out of there. It's guaranteed to not be red. Well, that's false. Only one of the things there is. So uh, it's not true that no matter what I pick out for anything I pick out, it's going to be like that. Adding the leading negation back in, that turns out to be true. Um, 
and uh, everything in there is such that it's not red, well, that turns out to be true. So leading, adding the leading negation back in, right, it's going to make that false. And then what we've got here is the empty domain. And so this is going to absolutely be false. Again, if you can't see that, take this away. On the empty domain, this statement here is true. So adding the negation back in makes it false. Okay. All right. This one's a bit more straightforward to evaluate, but we're going to evaluate it with fresh eyes here. And so at least one thing is red. Yeah. On D1, there's at least one thing in that bag that's red, right? That you could pull out. Is there at least one thing in this bag that you could pull out that's, that satisfies this description? Absolutely. Right here? No. Here? Is it true on the empty domain that there exists something that's red? Uh, no. So that's false. So once again, we see that um, these sentences take the same truth value across these different domains. And um, that suggests that they're logically equivalent. And in fact, they are, though we're not proving that right now. It is worth pausing here to point out this relationship between the quantifiers to you. It will aid learning and understanding as we move forward. So that's why we're doing it. Um, okay, let's make the relationship a bit more explicit. You can see kind of here a pattern. And the pattern that we're seeing can be spelled out with these, okay, with respect to these particular sentences. So th th these two rules sort of um, codify what's going on here. So um, let's take a look at this. Uh, again, we will prove this stuff later in Chapter 6. We'll have a syntactic rule quantifier negation that allows us to do this stuff. But, um, you know, this, this basically says if you've got a universally quantified sentence like this with the negation here, all right, then what you can do is you can take this negation and slip it to the outside. So you can go from the inside to the outside, and there it is on the outside. And when you cross that quantifier, you switch it to the other quantifier. So take the negation across the quantifier to the outside, switch the quantifier, leave everything else the same. All right. Similarly, if you're going from this to this, take this negation from the outside, move it to the inside. There it is right there on the inside and switch the quantifier and boom. OK, so that's kind of the rule that's being extrapolated here. And it's the rule that we're going to have officially later. We're just working a little bit more heuristically right now and informally. So, um, you know, similarly, if you have an existential quantifier with the negation on the inside, you can take that negation, move it to the outside. There it is on the outside. And we switch the existential to the universal, leave everything else the same. And similarly, if we have a negation on the outside of the universal, we can move it in. There it is right there and switch the quantifier and bang. OK, and um, if you look at this, you can kind of see that that's what you get. This case is a little bit interesting. All right. So let's let's uh, take a look at um, this case uh, together. So let me blow this up a little bit. That should be good. All right. So um, let's go ahead and, and, and yeah, just sort of take a look at this. So, uh, you know, you could look at this one of two ways. We could say, OK, we're going to take this negation right here and we're going to switch it to the inside. All right. So it's going to go. Uh, all we've done so far is we've taken this and we've moved it to the inside. All right. OK, so it ends up looking like that. But we also have to switch the quantifier. Right. So, you know, we've got to change this to this guy, just like this rule says here. And then you could end up, you know, double negating it, basically. And look, look what you're left with. Right. Um, so that's why this relationship exists and how it follows these rules. Um, there's a similar situation going on with um, this pair right here. So let's take a look at this. Um, let's go uh, here. This has to go to for all x fx. So if you think about it as taking this guy and moving it in or else taking this guy and moving it out. All right, we'll do it moving it out. So if I were to move that out, right, I would get this guy moved out would yield here and he's taken away from there and I switch my quantifier of course and then uh, with double negation remove you can think of it that way okay the other way of course you could think about it is by taking um, this one and moving it in if I move it in 
and I switch my quantifier, I end up with that, and with double negation, leads to the same place. All roads lead to the same place following these rules. Okay, let's slip into 4.7b, and we'll keep um, examining this formal relationship with plenty of practice problems so that you really feel like you can navigate it um, with ease.